the one thing you can count on is WNBA fans aren't going to throw stuff at players, but they are going to ride for those players and they're going to have their back. <laughs>
you know, the competitive nature that she has. And you just always, you always love to see um, when our own is having that type of success. Yeah, and Javon, you mentioned her character. One thing I'm happy to see, we mentioned the small sample size where the three balls really falling for her so far on the season now. She's at 40%. And it's really encouraging to see that three-point shot fall because last season she was playing through a lot of pain, shot just 23% from the outside. Megan, that outside shot, it's not only going to be critical for the Phoenix Mer Mercury, it's going to be critical for Canada when they get their opportunity to do what they can for a medal. 1,000%. And... Uh, it's interesting because actually when her and I were preparing to do uh, the all women's broadcast back in March, she was doing some of her training at uh, the OVO center and I was actually there for testing and I knew she was there. So I popped over to say hi. And before I went in the door, she was actually putting in work from beyond the arc. And in, I believe it was six of the shots that she took. I don't think she missed one. Like, and I'm not even joking because I don't remember and saying, I don't think she missed one. I'm saying because she was, had taken so many in about a 30 second span that I was watching her that I don't think she missed one. So it's a credit not only to the fact that she's rising to the occasion, she's playing in less pain and no pain, like you mentioned V last season, but she's also putting in the work, not just for her time with the Phoenix Mercury and the WNBA, but she knows that that work is going to translate with Team Canada because when it comes to the international play of game, that three-point shot is going to be so important and so lethal because it means that you're going to give another threat to the defense. You're going to force them to have to guard you beyond the arc. And that means that when you want to dump it inside to your bigs, you're that threat from beyond the arc. So you've got access inside because there's not going to be double teams coming your way. So, Megan, I'm going to put some pressure on you because you've seen it up close. You've seen her working in the booth and you've, you've you know, obviously you've seen her working on the court. She a better broadcaster or she a better ball player? That's one She's pretty you. darn good. She's a pretty darn good <laughs> broadcaster. But at the end of the day, that that Kia Nurse was was made to play basketball. Point blank. Period. End of sentence. Let's get into a bigger conversation here. We talked about how important that three point shot is going to be for Kia for the Canada women's team. Looking at the team as a whole, where do we see them going into those Olympic games? Obviously, unlike the men, they've already sealed their berth, uh, and we know that they're going to be there, ranked fourth. Uh, in the FIBA rankings, where do you see them stacking up, Megan? I think they have a very good chance to to make the podium this this year and this Olympics. And I think that's a testament to uh, head coach Lisa Tomitis and the work that she's put in over the course of her tenure as the head coach. And it's it's a continuation of building off of what they've done previously. Javon mentioned earlier with the Pan Am success. They had success at the 2012 Olympics in London. That's really and truly kind of where the the love and the eruption for the women's senior, excuse me, the senior women's team really came to fruition. Was all of that leading from uh, the London Games into the Pan Ams when they were uh, at Ryerson University? That is all now part of the success that they're having, and we're starting to see and the continuation as well too of women basketball players in Canada continuing to be part of this system and I think a lot of credit goes to them but I definitely feel that they could easily get to the podium this season they're going to have a lot to get through when you think of the Australia's of the world we all know team USA is going to be uh, a, a juggernaut even teams like France you have to prepare yourself and and get ready for this but I think just the women's uh, the women's side of the bracket when you look at the Olympics for basketball as a whole, the parity has continued to rise. And that's really and truly what you want to see is that it's not always just one country taking over and com completely dominating what we have seen in years past. But other countries are now starting to develop their talent to be more successful and to have more successful programs. But I definitely feel that Canada could medal this year, whether it's gold, silver or bronze. I can't wait to see, but I'm just excited to see this team get, get back to action on an international level. So I'm definitely looking forward to a podium finish. But I'll say this, they've established themselves over the last couple of years, like you've said, in, in, in the amount of success that they've had. With that being said, now there's a bullseye on your back. Teams are gunning for you. Like, you, you've been top four. You have to, there's going to be a learning curve. There's, gonna, there's still going to have to be a point where you adapt and know that, you know, with every game, teams are coming at you. We know that this team is going to be well coached. We know that this team has, you know, a, a wide pool of talent. But now, you know, you're the top gun, and teams are going to be going after you right from the, from the get-go. 
Yeah, Megan, you mentioned that parity. It's going to be tight. I mean, obviously, we know what the U.S. can do, but then you got the usual suspects in France, uh, Australia, Spain. And then the last World Cup, we saw Belgium get into the mix as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see how things play out. Let's head to our starting fives because it's time to get into who our starting five would be for the Olympics. Obviously, we did this in our very first episode. I'm curious to see how things have changed. For me, I was so amazed by what Letitia Amir did in the NCAA run. I've got her squeaking into that starting five now. Uh, I like her in that front court next to Natalia Tomwa. What about you, Megan? So I am actually not changing my starting five from earlier when we began this show. I'm keeping it with, as you mentioned, Letitia Miri, uh, Kia Nurse, Mia Marie Langlois, Kayla Alexander, and Nao Rainkaka Kunwe. I just feel that those four, with the addition of Amiri, they bring such a veteran presence. They bring experience, not just playing with Team Canada, but as well to playing internationally, uh, professionally for their teams. Then you also have a player in Kia Nurse who plays in the WNBA, does not go overseas, uh, didn't go overseas, excuse me, this off season. Uh, due to COVID and restrictions and whatnot, but has played in Australia and is familiar with the international game. So I think the combination of their experience matched up with, as you mentioned, Vivek, the experience that Amiri has gotten, not only just in the NCAA tournament, but when you can be coached by one of the greatest players to play the game in Don Staley, and who is turning herself into one of the greatest coaches as well too, who's also Team USA's coach and has the international experience as well. She's been coached by someone who's fantastic. And I think that is also going to very much benefit her when it comes to playing for Team Canada in the America uh, qualification tournament and as well too when it comes to Tokyo 2020 later this summer. So I definitely think that that is my starting five. I liked it before and I love it even more now. <laughs> I, you know, I couldn't have said it better, but with mine, I think I'm, I'm sticking with the same. Uh, Kia Nurse, Bridget Carlton, uh, Natalie Chunwa. Uh, I'm gonna throw in Aaliyah Edwards there. I, I love what she did at UConn there, throw some youth in there. Um, you know, and, and I, these girls, I think at the end of the day, these women, they're just, they, they continue to play. Uh, they continue to play tough, they continue to grow, and they continue to get better year after year. And I think the mix of youth, the, the mix of veteran leadership and veter veteran experience is what is why this team has created a culture and continue to build on that culture and be successful year after year. Last thing I'm gonna shout out, hey, Minnesota Lynx broadcast, you gotta get Natalia Chun was name right. That's gonna wrap it up for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you in a couple weeks.